Hi there. Welcome to Modular for the Masses Projects. Today we're going to make a white noise generator. As you can see, there's no schematic. Um, I'm going to draw it as I go or while I'm explaining the circuit. It's a very simple circuit, but it gets really good results. Um, you do need a bipolar power supply which I made a whole video about how to build yourself one, but then I realized bipolar power supplies, if you do it the way I was showing, can be dangerous, and I don't want anybody to burn down their house. So figure out how to get yourself a bipolar power supply. If you want to get two wall warts and wire them together in a certain way to get a positive and a negative voltage, maybe you could try that. It might work for you, but be very careful and figure out some really good way to do it. There's other ways too, which are a little more expensive. But let's make it happen. Okay. The thing that actually makes the noise in a white noise generator is a transistor, an NPN transistor. I'm gonna draw it basically upside down. Um, the pointed end is gonna go here the non-pointed end is not going to even have anything attached to it at all. It'll be unconnected. You can break it off. The way they make noise is by putting a positive voltage into the way it's not supposed to really go. And I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but physics, physics, electronic theory, something to do with electrons bumping into each other, it makes white noise. In order to get the positive voltage in there. We're going to put a couple big value resistors putting going into there. These will be 470k each. Oh my gosh. And here is the positive voltage. And here we're going to include a 10 microfarad capacitor going to ground. Um, according to the Music for Outer Space from Outer Space website, this increases the stability of the circuit. The base of the transistor goes to the negative voltage through a 10k resistor. All right, so we have white noise right here. Oh, this looks like a plus, but really it means not connected to anything. All right, N, C. That means not connected. All right, we're gonna do a one microfarad capacitor going into the inverting input of an op amp ground is going to, or the positive, the non-inverting input is going to go to ground. Um, this might be an electrolytic capacitor. I have some SMD capacitors that are non-polarized, but I'll go ahead and use an electrolytic. The feedback resistor is going to be one mega ohm. All right, so after this, we might have uh, de depending on how good this particular transistor is at making the white noise, this might be loud enough and it might be too quiet. So what we need to do is amplify that. We're going to take that signal, put it into the non-inverting input of a second side of the op amp, and this is going to be a non-inverting op amp. So the feedback so, oh my word, messed up. Okay, so the part we're going to use to make the, the white noise is going to be a NPN transistor. The leg of the transistor we're most concerned about is the one with an arrow on it. 
the other end, the other leg doesn't even get connected to anything. So what happens is you put a positive voltage the wrong way through an NPN transistor or try to put it through when I actually go through because this acts like a diode. But you try to put it in and because of uh, electrical properties that I don't really understand, um, something to do with Brownian noise I think, there's um, electrons running into each other and making white noise. We get the positive voltage going, trying to go into here through a couple pretty big value resistors. All right, these are going to be 470k resistors. And right here, according to Music from Outer Space, MFOS, putting an electrolytic, like a 10 microfarad capacitor from here to ground increases the stability. Okay, I've built some without that, but why not? The base of the transistor goes through a 10K resistor to ground. All right, so when we have this circuit set up, this part is going to be the part with the noise. We want to make that louder. So we run it through a one microfarad capacitor. The positive side over here, I'm going to use probably an electrolytic because I have non-polarized capacitors, but they're SMD and they're a pain to work with, especially on a video. Oops, this does not go to ground, it goes to the minus voltage rail. Um, Alright, so here we're going to put this into a inverting input of an op amp. The non-inverting input goes to ground. The feedback resistor is a one meg resistor. Okay, so now we need, now with this op amp amplifying it like this, um, it might be loud enough already, it might not, who knows. We are going to run this through a potentiometer, going straight to ground. And this doesn't really matter what size it is. I'll go ahead and write 10K. But it could be anything from 5K up to 1 meg if you wanted. Whatever you got in your box that's more than 5K. And this will be our volume controller. And this is going straight into the non-inverting input of the other half of this op amp. Now this is a non-inverting op-amp, so the way we're going to trim this circuit to get as much gain, as much loudness as we need, we're going to run it through a, potenti a trimmer, which is basically a potentiometer that is not available to change the setting of from the, from the outside, and we're going to put it to ground. Now an uh, op-amp can only change the voltage on this. That's what it can do. It can't change the voltage on either of these. It listens to whatever's coming into the in inverting and the non-inverting inputs and does whatever it can with the output to influence them to be the same. So let's say what's coming into here is one volt and it wants to keep this one also at one volt. So it will send whatever voltage it needs to get this to one volt. If this happens to be right in the middle, that one volt, to get this to be one volt, and this is right in the middle, then it would be two volts because this is a voltage divider between this and ground. Okay, so this way we can control the gain of this op amp. We can decrease the resistance over here and increase the resistance over here, and that will get the gain lower to about, to about one if this is a big enough resistor, big enough potentiometer. Um, if we move the potentiometer that way and increase the resistance on this part of the circuit and lower it down here, this is going to have to put out more voltage 
because the resistor divider here is decreasing the amount of voltage that the negative pin is seeing. <sighs> that was confusing. At least it was difficult to explain. I hope it wasn't confusing. Um, we can make this a 10K trimmer. Doesn't really matter. Anything more than 5K, again, will be fine. And then we have the output. Let's protect it with a 680K uh, ohm resistor. Not K. And then out. Yay! Easy to draw. Cool. Got it? Good. We need one op amp. I'm going to use an LM137. Oh, nope, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use an NE5532. The pinout for standard dual op amps. This is the positive rail. This is the negative rail. It's always good to put a bypass capacitor between them or put two bypass capacitors both going to ground. I prefer to put them between the two rails. 100 nanofarad disk capacitor is totally good. Positive plus minus plus minus out. And I'm going to use an NE5532, but you can use any dual op amp, general purpose audio, TL072. There's a lot of other ones out there. Many of them are cheaper than this, but this is, you know, the best cheap um, op amp. When I said the NE5532 is the best op amp for this cheap, what I meant was the best cheap audio op amp specifically for audio. The TL072 is a lot more robust and a little bit more general purpose for some reasons, but I don't have as many TL072s. I got tons of any 5532s. The transistor I'm going to use is a 2N3904. And this little guy is like this. All right. This is the base. So what I'm going to do is take this leg that does not have the arrow on it, and we're going to break it off. Sorry, guy. If panpsychism is real, and you have an awareness, any kind of consciousness, I don't think you'll be upset to be part of this circuit, because this is a pretty cool circuit. And I know you're not operating, little guy, in the way that you were really designed to, but that's okay. Here's my gigantic stash of any 5532 chips. <coughs> it's gonna get a bypass capacitor, a 100 nanofarad capacitor, and I grabbed a, uh, some random resistor. In building this particular circuit, I'm going to put the positive that way and the negative that way.
for reasons that will become clear. Now make sure that you have the little indicator dent, that sort of cutout thing. That's the top of the chip. I drew it right there. And that's pretty important. I have blown up many chips by getting the getting them mounted wrong. Foolish, foolish. Easy to do. And to be honest, easy to not do. Now I'm a little disappointed because the 100 nanofarad capacitor between the power rails is not exactly in the middle. But it doesn't care. The electrons, they do not care. Uh, just recently I decided to increase the heat of my soldering iron by shortening the tip. <laughs> and it works so well I'm not even moving it back. Alright. Now the first op amp, the plus input is right there and it goes straight to ground. So this leg, this pin, will be our new ground pin. That's what we're going to sort of use as our ground right now. I'm going to grab a 10 microfarad capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor. They are usually polarized. They'll have a side that says minuses on it. And that's the side that needs to go to the most negative part that it's connected to. The most negative part in this particular case is going to be the negative, is going to be ground. Now, maybe sometimes it's going to be something else. Like maybe sometimes you will connect it to. Um, the negative rail, in which case ground would be more positive than the negative rail. If you try to put enough voltage and into a el electrolytic capacitor the wrong way, it can literally explode, it can pop. I've done that before. It gets goo all over the place. <laughs> this is really dramatic. So remember, this side goes to ground of this electrolytic 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, this is going to be... Here we go. Alright, that's going to ground. Now we need a couple... 470K resistors. The reason I put the rails out to the side like this is so that my 470k resistor could go over here.
um, probably with 470k of impedance between the positive rail and that capacitor, probably that wouldn't explode. However, if the capacitor never gets discharged through the, you know, then maybe it would explode, I don't know. Just don't tempt fate. Just go ahead and install it the right way. Um, in some applications where there's um, AC going through an electrolytic capacitor, in particular for audio applications, sometimes people recommend putting two electrolytic capacitors. Half the value you're trying to get um, installed cathode to anode, anode to cathode. So heal the toe, so to speak. Um, I, I suppose I've done that from time to time. Okay, what I just did is I connected this 470 ohm capacitor, kilo ohm capacitor, to the positive leg of the resistor, capacitor, resistor. Go ahead and keep your leads short. Now, I'm going to this leg. This is the minus input of the first op amp, this pin right here. And I'm going to move it straight up like that. We're going to put our feedback resistor, our one meg resistor between the output and the minus input. I need a one meg resistor. Here we go. I should be embarrassed about how dirty my soldering iron tip is. That's better. Okay, now I can connect the transistor, which I already broke off the uh, end, the leg that is not, does not have an arrow. And I will connect it to the 470K resistor. That's going to do it. Keep that lead short. 
Now the other end of this is going to go right there to the inverting input. We're going to need a one microfarad capacitor to go between them with the minus leg of the capacitor going to the input. minus leg of this little one microfarad capacitor is going to go right there. I'm going to cut it and bend it. That's going to work really well. Mm-hmm. Nice and strong. Cut it. I'm going to kind of bend it to bend around the transistor leg a little bit. Then I'm going to solder it in place. Now the last part of this half of the circuit is getting the, I'm, t I'm uh, trimming that tr uh, resistor lead just a little bit because it was getting suspiciously close to the base of the transistor. Okay, now we need a 10K resistor to go from here to this pin, which is the minus voltage rail, the negative voltage rail. So. 10K resistor. Let's make that soldered. Boom. That part is done. Now, we have a adorably cute little circuit right here where there is coming out right here out of the output of this first op amp that's going to be white noise we're going to run that through this potentiometer the potentiometer is going to be on the front panel and that will control how loud the resulting um, signal noise is I'm not going to do that potentiometer right now Right now, I'm going to do the trimmer. Um, here is my 10K trimmers. 
a 10K trimmer will have 103 on the top. That represents one zero, followed by however many zeros that last digit is, and that's three. So one zero, 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 which is 10,000 ohms. Okay, so one of, this, the, one of the ends of this potentiometer is going to go to ground. This trimmer, okay, it is a potentiometer, but I'm going to call it a trimmer, because that's also what it is. Um, one end of this trimmer goes to ground, the other end of this trimmer goes to the output of this op-amp. The middle, the wiper, goes to the minus, um, to the minus input. So I'm going to attach it like this with one end going to ground, which is this part right here, this whole middle bit on the bottom of the top amp. And then the wiper goes to the, the wiper goes to the minus and the output. Okay, that's, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to, this is the input, this is where the signal's gonna come in. I'm gonna bend it kind of to the side. Now, it'd be nice for this trimmer for us to be able to turn it clockwise to make it louder. That means clockwise has to move the wiper closer to ground because that will force the op amp to put out more voltage to try to get through the resistor divider to get to the minus pin to make it equal this voltage. So I'm going to put the, the way these work, you twist them clockwise and it pulls the wiper away from the ground pin, from this pin right under the thing. So, pulling it away, 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 away. Okay, clockwise. Okay. So the one away, need, farther away from that thing, needs to be connected to ground. What I did was I cut off the thin bits. It's going to connect like that. And that last one pin of the trimmer is going to go to that ground spot right there. I'll do the ground first because it's going to be convenient to do it that way. Now the input pin of the potential of the op amp, I don't want that to touch the ground, so I'm kind of moving it away. And those two legs connect like that. Okay, the one leg of my trimmer goes to ground, the wiper of the trimmer goes to the inverting input, and the other end of the trimmer goes to the output of the op amp. So now all we have to do is put a 680 ohm resistor on the output.
and this just protects the output of the op amp from unexpected situations like what if you accidentally plug in a you know full rail voltage that would be awkward all right i'm gonna zap that right there And now we need to tie this end of the op amp to this side of the op amp through a potentiometer. Okay, here's the potentiometer I'm gonna use. I am gonna use a 10K potentiometer. I'm sorry, 100K potentiometer. Now, I like these kind of potentiometers because they are really easy to solder to. I'm going to bend this pin down because that pin is where <clears throat> the ground is going to be made, the connection to ground is going to be made. And I'm going to solder it directly to the housing of the potentiometer. The signal is going to come in to the other end, the other leg of the potentiometer. Like that. And the output will go right there. That's not a very strong solder joint, but it'll be good to just hold it in place. All right, if we look at the potent, if, if we look at the op amp just to confirm the dent right is right there which makes this the out of this op amp and that's what I have going to the high end to the high side of this potentiometer this other pin is going to go to the input the inverting or non-inverting input of the second potent second op amp And then this needs to be connected to ground. I'll go ahead and do the ground connection first. And I'll make it nice and strong. I'll use one of the sturdy 
capacitor leads. I will solder it to the whole ground situation we have going on at the bottom of the op amp, the underside of it. And then I'm going to Gonna solder it to this little tab. Like this. That will be nice and strong. There we go. Make sure the other tab is not going to flex and touch anything because of course that is going to be grounded now. Alright, the wiper of the potentiometer is going to go over to the plus input of that op amp. I'm going to go ahead and live dangerously and use a bare wire. This is probably a resistor lead. Since it's so short and it goes in such a straight line, it probably will not touch anything else. It won't flex. To make sure, I'm going to make there be a little more room there. And then I'll attach it, connect it to the wiper of the potentiometer. And boom, kaboom. We now have a white noise generator. Um, when you're putting it in a panel, um, you will be restricted to putting other parts too close by. Um, I suppose you could build this and run jumper wires to it or build it in a slightly different configuration so that it's more vertically oriented to the potentiometer. But, in any case, let's try it out. Here's the audio input for my bench amplifier. Here's my... Okay, first... Getting rid of all the metal. surprise connections. That's going to be the audio. <coughs> Here is the plus. Let's look at the op amp. This pin is plus right here. The pin kitty corner from it that the capacitor is also attached to is minus. And then the black pin here, or the black grabber, is ground. And that's just going to go 
right to the body of the potentiometer. And I'll kind of stick it here so we can get to the, here's my little uh, power access jumper thing. Now I'll turn it on and hope it doesn't explode. No explosions. Now I'll make sure it's not turned up too loud. It's probably okay. That seems nice and hot. That does make it quieter. All right, I like it. It sounds really, really good. Now, one of the amazing, one of my favorite sounds in my synthesizer is a simple white noise signal that's going through a, that's just gated, like it's on or it's off. And then I have it set to be on or off for a certain amount of time. And adjusting that can be such a cool sound. You hit it every 16th note, so it's going and then you make some of them longer. <laughs> some shorter, sounds so cool. So there we have it, people. Success. A white noise generator. Stick this into a panel, stick that panel in your synthesizer, and boom. Run it through VCA uh, to get yourself a little funky snare. Run it through a really high um, resonance oscillator to get yourself some kind of screamy um, screamy noise, notes, some music out of it. Be great, fantastic, super awesome. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Click on the notification button.